I once had a coworker who said you never need data transfer objects. Well, after this video, you will think differently. Data transfer objects or DTOs are a great way to simplify your API, make sure your data models are clean, efficient and secure. So let's go through what a DTO is, why you should use them and how to implement them in your .NET projects. So you see the current situation here. It's of course, as always, a little game application. And the very first thing I wanna show you is this game character model here. You see it has lots of properties and ID, name, level, class, and so on, but also stuff that maybe you don't want to show your user, like the secret quest info and the password, and maybe even the dates here are not really necessary to transfer to the client, right? So we've got a .NET web API here. And as you can see in the controller, we now have a function to get a certain character, get it from the database. Of course, this is simulated in this example. And as you can see here, there's all these data here, all these information, like also again, the secret quest info and password. Now let's run this real quick to see the result. All right, there we are. Now let's just test this here. Let's add ID one. And the result is here. Again, you see all that sensitive information, information that we don't really need. Everything is here exposed on the client. So now's the time for our DTO. So let me tell you what a DTO is, but please could you first click that like button? Would be really nice, thank you. So a DTO is a simple object that's used to transfer data between layers in your application. They are often used in APIs to control what data is exposed to the client and simplify the structure of complex objects. So let's build that DTO now. Again, in the Solution Explorer, we can, regarding the structure, you can do it in infinite different ways. For instance, we can add a DTO in the models folder. We can create another folder called DTOs, for instance. This is totally up to you and not part of this video. I've got other videos for that. But here now, let's just add this thing in the models folder. We create a new item and we call this thing game character DTO or DTO, or since we are in a web API, what we could also call this thing is response, for instance, game character response or get game character response. So you see there are a couple of options to name this thing, now to make things simple, maybe game character response is fine. And in here now, we again add some properties, maybe we can even copy them from our game character. So here, what you wanna expose in the client, let's just say is the name, the level, the class, health, weapon, and the inventory, all right? So let's just copy that paste it here. And by the way, what you can also do with DTOs, of course, is rename the properties, for instance, or add properties that combine stuff from other models, other classes, all right? But more about that in a minute, because the thing is that we also have to map these. So let's just first check out this response here, this DTO, the game character response. So we've excluded sensitive information and the DTO is now much cleaner and safer to share. And if you're still thinking about why to use them, well, apart from the security reasons, DTOs can reduce the payload size, hence lead to a better performance. They can decouple your API from internal business logic. So your changes to your domain models, for instance, won't break your API and they can make it easier to manage different API versions. But now we have to do something to be able to use the DTO. And by the way, I wanted to tell you with the nights getting longer now and fall rolling in, I've got something special for you. I'm running a longer night sale on my .NET Web Academy, where we dive really deep into .NET Web Development and Blazor. So if you want, check it out at .NETWebAcademy.com or check out the link in the video description. So now let's check out the controller here. And as you can see here, we're just returning the character so far. Now to use that DTO, what we have to do is simply create a new DTO, a new object of that thing. So let's say we have not actually var, we have a game, game a character response here. And we already use the object initializer to, well, set all the values. And in this case, what we do is simply say the name is the character name, the level is the character level, and IntelliCode is almost doing all the work for us. We've got the class, which is the character class. Then again, health, is character health, and the weapon. And then we've got the inventory right down there. So this is now the character inventory. And of course, 
in the end, we return the response. So now let's restart the application and please keep watching because there's a better way to do that instead of manually mapping your object. But now first for the result, as you can see, now let's add ID two just for fun. It's much smaller now, right? So all the data we don't need is not exposed to the client. But I promised you there's a better way to do this. And maybe you already heard of stuff like AutoMapper or Mapster. I like Mapster. And this thing now is actually doing this work automatically. So let's try that. We just manage our NuGet packages. And in here, let's check out Mapster, for instance. And we need exactly this package, a fast, fun, and stimulating object to object mapper. Kind of like AutoMapper, just simpler and way, way faster. So AutoMapper was or maybe still is the king of all that stuff, mapping DTOs and Mapster Mapper is a new beautiful option in my opinion. So let's just install this thing. And now here in our controller, we can now do the following. We say our response, and now I can use var, is the character. And now we can use the adapt function here. And you see it already in the tooltip. We have that source type and the destination type. Or here, we can just set the T destination. So just the destination type. And when I do it like that, so let's say this is now a character response. This is everything I have to do. Let me show you that restart application. There we are. We try this out. ID three this time, execute, and this thing is mapped. So now if you want to see that in action in a complete .NET Web API project, you should definitely check out this video here on the screen.